Hello and welcome to Rotted Reviews, and today this video is going to be dedicated to patron Catherine who wanted me to watch and review the 2022 version of Scream. Now ordinarily I wouldn't do a review of a movie without tackling its prior entries first, however I'm probably going to do a full franchise review of this one at some point in the near future anyway, so let's just go ahead and plow on with what my thoughts were on the newest Scream movie. With Wes Craven having now passed away and this film dedicated to him, the directorial chairs are now being filled by Matt Benatelli Olpin and Tyler Gillett. And in typical Scream fashion, this movie opens up by showing us somebody that's getting harassed and harangued on the phone by an unseen assailant that wants to play a game about scary movies. This time it's Amber Freeman played by Mikey Madison. This leads to the eventual starting back up of Ghostface terrorizing the town of Woodsboro. And who is it that's doing it this time? Well, that's just part of the movie. Just so you know, this review is going to be spoiler free, but I may talk more freely about Scream 1 through 4 just because it kind of becomes a little bit more relevant. So spoilers abound as far as its previous films, you've been warned. So honestly, there was a whole lot that I liked about this one. If I had to just come up with a quick fire draw ranking of this, I would say uh, my preference goes from greatest to least as, uh, let's see, one, two, five, four, three. Yeah, I think that's about right. I don't know. We'll get to it when I get to the franchise review proper. But I did like this one well enough that it wound up being kind of middle of the road in the series for me of a fairly solid series. This is one of those rare franchises where I can look back at every single entry and say with absolute honest confidence that I didn't dislike any of them. I thought in this the characters were fairly well done. The concept that this one was trying to tackle as far as uh, analyzing and dissecting the notion of the requel was interesting and I liked that. I was actually kind of thinking about what in modern day horror is Scream going to be tackling and the idea of the requel just kind of seemed to be a good natural fit between what's going on in the world of present day horror meeting and aligning with the slasher genre. So yeah. High marks. And as far as the analysis and the breakdown and the meta references and so forth, I thought it did a pretty good job. But if I did have to come up with some complaints about this one, and I do, there are a few. So this one may be picking nits a little bit, and it's definitely a little bit of armchair quarterbacking and backseat driving, whatever you want to call it. But I had this thought after watching the movie the first time a little while ago, and I did just watch it again last night just to see if this thought kind of holds up. And it does and it doesn't, but I'm going to stand by it because I want to include it in this video. As far as being a requel, what I have to say is that Scream movies are typically great for not just analyzing the particular entry that they are, well, uh, being a part of, but to actually be a part of it. Scream didn't just analyze slashers, it was a slasher. Scream 2 didn't just analyze and dissect sequels, it was a sequel, I mean, by its very inherent nature. Scream 3, it didn't uh, just analyze the ending portion of a planned trilogy, but it was the ending portion of, at that point, a planned trilogy. We didn't get Scream 4 until 11 years after that. So if this one is going to analyze and be a bit meta about the notion of a requel, I kind of wish that it had been a little bit more of a requel. And this is going to be a big leap. Maybe people have said this before already. I actually purposefully avoid a lot of opinions from communities and so forth for a movie that I know at some point I'm going to tackle because I don't want my opinion to be swayed or influenced. So for all I know, this could be very common uh, grounding elements of conversations that have already taken place and I could just be simply a hat on a hat at this point, but I do kind of wish that this had taken more of a cue from some of the more popular requels like the new Halloween movie and done something kind of daring. The biggest thing that I could think of was bring back Jamie Kennedy. If we brought back Randy Meeks as a character, it could be that kind of foundational grounding that a lot of requels are going through these days where we could actually just say, presuppose that the original scream happened and that the rest didn't. It's something that a lot of requels have been doing beyond just kind of balancing the old with the new, bringing in old cast, bringing in new cast, having different uh, tones that are still kind of an homage to the original, but more visceral, more you know, present day uh, difficult kind of thing. It also will often take the sequels and just 
Toss them. I was actually kind of thinking about what was the first movie that really did that as far as a big blockbuster hit. And the only one that I can think of, the earliest one that I could think of, wasn't a horror movie at all. It was the Brandon Routh Superman Returns that presupposed, without overtly saying it, that the first and second movies happened, but three and four didn't. So now we're just going to inject ourselves in the existing timeline. And that has been kind of a thing that has slowly caught on. It's not required for a requel, but I think it could have been interesting to have Randy back and to kind of not just analyze the notion of movies like Halloween and so forth, but to actually participate in them. I don't know. It would have been a daring move, I grant you, and I don't think the movie really suffered for it, having Randy's uh, niece and nephew and so forth, the twins, uh, pretty much just filled his spot anyway, but I think it would have been an interesting element anyway. It's just something that I thought of, and I haven't honestly been able to shake the thought since. But like I said, that's kind of picking nits a little bit. I think my bigger problem, my biggest problem with this movie is kind of a problem that I have with a lot of the entries in the Scream series, and that is the nature of the mystery of this. Right from the get-go with the first movie and every entry since then, it's always been the start of something bad, who's behind the mask. It's been a who done it. And by determining who done it, we're also trying to determine who's next on the kill list and so on and so forth. But that's the big overarching uh, element there, especially as we continue down the series. Scream 5, Scream, was essentially an experiment in the audience trying to figure out who is Ghostface prior to the curtain being lifted and the killer revealing him, her, or themselves. Which is fine. It's fun. I dig it. I love a good whodunit. I love a good mystery. I really do. And that's one of the problems that I have with this, is I love a good mystery. Maybe I'm getting spoiled. It's entirely possible. I have honestly been reading a lot of Agatha Christie lately, which... Uh, it's tough to live up to those kind of standards. However, watching this one in particular, especially the second time and kind of knowing what was going on and still watching for those clues, it just kind of seemed to me to be a little easy. In this case, there really just were no clues. Stuff was happening and that was pretty much it. Once the killer revealed themselves, it was pretty much, well, by that point, it literally could have been anybody. We didn't have clues, we simply had logical elements of deductive reasoning as far as process of elimination. The only clues we had were who was present in the room with Ghostface together, and even then we're tossing in the idea of multiple killers potentially because that's something that this franchise does, so that doesn't really even exclude anybody at any given point. When everybody is a possibility and everybody has motive and everybody has an opportunity, it kind of takes a little bit of the fun out of the whodunit mystery element. Again, anybody could have been the killer by any logical reasoning, by any clues, by any motivation, by anything, by the time they unmask themselves. I would much more have preferred while we were watching the movie to have received a clue 30 minutes in that definitely told us that it could be this person and not even realize that it happened only by watching it a second or a third time that we pick up on that one little thing there. Oh, I can't believe the filmmakers put that in there. Uh, movies like Knives Out, it'll have those moments in which it'll actually show us the consequences of an event that we have not yet fully understood yet. And as the movie goes on, we then see the back end context behind how that event unfolded and it starts to click into place and make sense. It's a delicate matter, I grant you, but it's simply a matter of connecting the dots. But the filmmakers have to insert the dots in the first place subversively. We don't even know that they're there, that kind of thing. Except in the case of Scream, it was more just there were no dots. It could have been anybody. And that kind of took a little bit of the fun out of it. But if you're not in it for the mystery and you're in it for the kills, I guarantee you this one will satisfy. The visceral brutality of it was awesome. As a horror fan, I was all about this. It had some great moments that were tributes to horror films. It had some great moments that were tributes to Wes Craven. It had some great tributes to the entirety of the Scream series with one of the best red right hand sequences of the entire Scream franchise. Now they've already talked about making another and color me the least bit unsurprised, but if I want to take this opportunity to weigh in on the situation, which eh, I'm going to. 
I do kind of hope that they take the old guard and retire them. As nice as it was to see Courtney Cox and David Arquette and Nev Campbell back on the screen as their iconic characters, I think that the passing of the torch at this point needs to finalize. Either that, or do a proper requel and bring them all back, including Jamie Kennedy. Anyway, I think that should about do it. Thank you, Catherine, for asking me to take a look at Scream. I'm happy to do so. I'm happy to weigh in on it. Thank you for watching this video. I do hope you enjoyed it. Remember, next time you want to watch a horror movie, first make sure that it's good and rotted.